What is up with Yugi's deck? Let's find out. Dual sauce, extra sauce. Hit that subscribe. Hey everyone, this is Jesse from the Janja Zone here to talk about a very specific deck in Yu-Gi-Oh. No, it's not the TCG meta. No, it's not speed duels or rush duels. This is the anime we're talking about here. And obviously we're talking about Yugi's deck. Yeah, Yugi Moto, his Duelist Kingdom deck, really kind of his whole deck in general. Yeah, he has a very weird deck because as you can see, throughout the Duel Monsters anime, or even further series of Yu-Gi-Oh!, everyone has their own very specific gimmick deck. Whether it's Rex Raptor having dinosaurs, or Joey with his warriors, or Jaden with his elemental heroes. Everyone sort of has a sort of theme. Even Chaz Princeton has multiple themes in his deck, from the dark monsters to Ojamas and Arm Dragon and the VW XYZ Dragon Catapult Cannon, a bunch of weird gumbo cards in his deck, but he does have a sort of theme. Wait, 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 don't forget to subscribe if you haven't because that helps me upload more videos and know that you like content like this. So what is going on with Yugi Moto? If you look at his deck, sure, as the series progresses, he gets more and more cards that relate to, let's say, magicians, I guess. You got Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl and Magical Hats and Magic Cylinder, things of that nature. But that's really only a small part of his deck. If you look at most of his duels, he uses a large variety of cards. Things from Gaia the Fierce Knight, Summon Skull, Valkyrion the Magna Warrior, Chimera, a ton of really weird cards, and it never really stops. And the only time that you see him with his, the most consistent deck is his very first duel in the very first episode where he duels Joey, and the only card you see is Blackland Fire Dragon, which means the first deck he ever had was a dragon deck. And that's kind of stretching it. See, after that, he gets his grandpa's deck, which was the framework. It was the skeletal structure of his various decks to come. So what kind of cards did he have there? And this is kind of what we're going to look at today, mostly his Duelist Kingdom deck, because it's the most variety deck, I would say. He definitely had a lot of very weak monsters, and that was kind of his whole shtick, was that he had weak monsters, but never underestimated them, because it's not Kaiba's deck, where it's a lot of strong monsters. He had weak monsters, but they figure out a way to win, at least enough to stall until you drew into Exodia. Eventually, he had to say goodbye to Exodia, and once he hit the Duel's Kingdom, then he was kind of left to figure out other sort of win conditions. And he still had weak monsters, at least considerable to other monsters or other characters' decks. He still had a card like Beaver Warrior or Celtic Guardian, which were weaker than other monsters we saw at the time, like Pendulum Machine or Yurabi. So he used a lot of equipped cards to help support them. Cards like Mystic Moon, cards like Horn of the Unicorn, and other sort of assistant spell cards, I guess would be a way to put it. Whether it was Spellbinding Circle or Mirror Force or Burning Land and Mackie the Magical Mist. He had a lot of cards that really fit exactly what he needed, and it's kind of funny when you think about that sort of how Pegasus's deck works, where it wasn't technically a theme with his main cards. He sure, they had a boss monster, you know, they had Dark Magician and Toon World respectively, but overall the cards were really kind of weird. And you look at a lot of Yugi's cards, and a lot of them tended to focus towards Earth or Dark Monsters, you saw this up with Silver Fang and Gaia and Celtic Guardian, or cards like Dark Magician, or Magician of Black Chaos, and Black Luster Soldier. So you had a lot of cards like that, but that really wasn't his theme. He wasn't going, hey, this is my Earth and Dark deck, I get advantages for dueling with these cards. It was, I have this card, let's see if this works, let's see. There's a lot of let's see if this works kind of strategies and just hoping that your opponent will attack into you to trigger your powerful trap cards. Again, things like Mirror Force or card like Magical Hats. A lot of 
trickery going on here, which I guess sort of plays into the magician theme, but it's really not intended, and that's more of me reading into it. And again, a lot of it was until he drew into that right card, until he drew into that Swords of Revealing Light, or Catapult Turtle, or Spell Shattering Arrow slash the Living Arrow, things of that nature. Otherwise, he was just kind of throwing caution to the wind and being, hey, here's my beaver warrior, but he does have Horn of the Unicorn, and I am setting some sort of trap card, so I'm playing this three-dimensional chess here while you're still playing 2D checkers. Let's see what you got. And of course, he did pull a lot of random shit out of his ass, as seen with cards like Black Luster Soldier, which really, I mean, come on, came out of nowhere. But the thing I see with Yugi's deck is that it's not so much just a complete random gumbo deck. He had kind of a theme when you think about it in terms of his character. When you look at characters like Mako, Weevil, Rex, they all had decks that connected to them, connected to their personality and name. Mako Tsunami, Water Cards, Rex Raptor, Dinosaur, Weevil, Underwood, Insects. So Yugi... As we all know, when he dueled, he became Yami, the Pharaoh of Egypt. And while his cards weren't Egyptian-themed cards, I think it went more a bit more abstract than that. Because we know that Yugi, or Yami, is the Pharaoh of Egypt. So it was his king of the whole land, in, as they saw it, that really formed the theme of his deck. Because if you look at his deck, he did have a large variety of a bunch of cards. He had dragons, he had zombie monsters, he had warriors and fiends, and most things you could possibly think of that was also expanded upon in the starter deck and other sorts of Yugi decks. So he had a lot of variety of cards, and that represents that he was the king of games and the king of monsters. He had all these monsters under his control. He wasn't just, hey, I'm really good with spellcaster cards. It was, hey, I'm really good with all sorts of these different kinds of monsters because I am the best, I am the king. Not in an egotistical way, obviously, but in the sense that he does have command of all. He is the pharaoh, that is his title. And I feel like that might be the main theme of this deck. And it sort of does go more so into Battle City. It extends to that with his deck with cards like King Jack and Queen Knight and the Chimera cards and Buster Blader and eventually the God cards become under his deck control, I guess is the best way I could put that. So it does extend through it. Obviously, it does get more of magician play to it, but that's probably because he needs more of a actual usable deck in Battle City and beyond. But for Duelist Kingdom, this was the deck he kind of had. And sure, it was technically his grandpa's deck, but he did have to change cards out for his own thing. I don't think grandpa had a magician of black chaos in it. His kind of thing was just, hey, I got weak monsters but I got Exodia. And you definitely saw Yugi's own personal touch to the deck when he went to Duel's Kingdom, when he had the more power cards to use in them with more strategy involved with them. I think that's really neat that there is, for the main character, a much more abstract deck compared to any other character in the series. And I think that's really awesome and unique and makes it really special for his Duel's Kingdom deck in particular because that's the most weird non-gimmicked one. So I just kind of wanted to make this video talking about that because I think it's kind of interesting to look at his deck and exactly what it did and the thought process behind it. That's kind of all I really got to say about that. So let me know what you think about this video. We'd like to see more discussions on a similar vein of this. Let me know down below in the comments or on Twitter at Janja's Zone or on my Discord at the launch base. And also feel free to support me with my Patreon, with my memberships, or pretty much wherever you can support me. That'd be great. I got merch too, so check that out. And of course, until then, have a wonderful day.